Hey guys, what's up? Jedi here, and today we're going to talk about counter peaking and dealing with high pressure situations. This was a requested topic, and another requested topic I know a lot of you guys have been asking for is a video on confidence. So don't worry, I'll be working on that this week. That being said, let's get into this video. So, what is a high pressure situation? It's basically when you're under a lot of pressure from your opponent who is playing super aggressively. Most of the time you're probably low HP because you got beamed and your main objective is to create some space and buy some time so that you can heal back up. And obviously your opponent doesn't want you to heal so they're doing everything they can to disrupt your minis and take you out. And I don't mean that kind of taking out, although I mean I personally wouldn't mind if they So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to assume you're low HP and you're trying to create some space so you can heal. Now I'm going to quickly go over the most obvious point which is to switch to hard mats. And that makes sense, right? I mean it should be basic instinct at this point in time. If you're struggling with this, make sure your switch material bind is easy to use. For example, mine is a mouse button which I can quickly press when I'm getting pressured and this just makes it much easier to make it an instinct for me to switch to hard mats. The next and probably most important thing is to create space and angles for yourself by boxing up in at least two one by ones. There are a couple reasons for this. So first of all, it literally gives you more space to work with. If you're getting pressured, you can just move into your other box without risking getting peace controlled or double edited on. And if your opponent pressures the wrong box, you'll also have time to quickly pop heals like mini splashes and fish. Another reason having two one by ones is so nice is that it creates more angles. The truth is, when you're getting pressured hard by a W keyer, you can make as many boxes as you want, but they're not going to stop spraying and pushing like a madman. The best way to get someone off of you is to counter peek and get some damage onto them. Most of the time, if you can hit them hard enough, even like the most brain dead W keyers like Unknown Army will be forced to stop and heal. And this is where having multiple boxes comes in perfectly. An enemy who is so focused on applying pressure will likely lose concentration on other important stuff like peace control and angles. If you've created enough space and edits for yourself, you'll be able to find opportunities to quickly box and peace control the other player or at least get in a fat tag shot. As an example, if you have two boxes here and someone drops on a ramp to pressure this wall, you know, this is pretty standard stuff right here. You can use your other box to create an angle and peace control. So by editing this wall, you can cone and wall your opponent like so. Make an edit and hit a big shot on them and also at the same time full box them in. This will probably surprise and scare them because they just went from a confident player to a box low HP one. Now you have the time and luxury to decide if you want to push them and finish the fight or heal. Now a quick tip for when you're expanding out is if someone drops onto this wall for example to pressure you, quickly place a ramp behind you and expand out the back. The reason for this is that the ramp acts as a second layer of protection in case they break the wall quickly they won't be able to get a free shot on you. And the reason you expand out the back is that it's harder for them from their perspective over here to get a double edit on you here than it is for them to quickly let's say if you went out the right side they could just wall and re box you in really quickly now for some more advanced tips when somebody drops out on a ramp like this to pressure your wall most people will pickaxe once and then switch to a weapon so if you let them pickaxe once and then open up and edit they're gonna have their weapon out and you'll most likely end up in their taj now of course there are a bunch of safe edits you can do on people who drop down like this peanut butter right here but it's still a very risky move to do especially after they've dropped down and they have their weapon out. So the best way to get free damage on someone who's dropping onto a wall is to actually edit before they drop down not after. So let's use this older example of the two one by one tier. To get some free damage I have to predict which wall they're gonna drop on. If I open an edit I'll have a free shot because right as they drop they're probably gonna have their pickaxe out. And I just take this free shot right here and get the free damage. Now you might be thinking, well, it's a game of chance if I happen to predict what wall they'll choose, right? But it's kind of not. See, you can use audio and rhythm to predict this sort of stuff. For example, if you hear someone on top of your box and their footsteps tell you that they're going in a certain direction, you can use that info to open the wall preemptively. Just make sure you don't do it too early or they'll know that you're opening the wall. And if you predict this right, you're going to get that free sweet damage. Now even if you predict wrong, it's not the end of the world. You can just place a ramp over your head for protection and expand out safely. This is actually useful to know because a lot of attackers will try to throw you off by placing multiple ramps before dropping down onto just one of them. Another tip on this topic is that players approaching a box are likely to drop onto their right side because it feels more natural. 
You obviously can't use this as a complete prediction, but it might help, so I thought I'd mention it anyway. Another tip on countering pressure is to be aware of what builds you own. If someone psychos into one of your boxes and you manage to get out, you can actually use your edits to get some damage because they essentially full box themselves for you. I went over this in my video on Epic Whale as well, so I'll leave that in the description down below. My last point today is to make sure you don't try to risk heal. Risk healing is when you're so close to popping that mini or big pot, so you stick it hoping you'll have time to hold the wall right after. Now unless you have two layers of protection, risk healing is almost always going to get you killed because as the name suggests, it's risky. So get some counter damage and create some space before and don't try to heal in front of a pressuring opponent. That's going to be it for my video on how to counter peak and deal with high pressure situations. If you guys enjoyed or learned something, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe to my channel for more Fortnite competitive tips and tricks. Like I said, the video on confidence will be up this week. And please use code JEDI2X in the Fortnite item shop to support me. Thank you guys for watching as always and peace.